This is the Hot Metal Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Martin Sully, founder of Snapper Studio, a brand strategy and visual design studio in the heart of Newcastle, Australia. And I'm on a mission to help you gain clarity in your brand and confidence in what you're selling. From thoughtful, empowering brand strategies to defining powerful visual stories, I'll arm you with bite-sized branding tools to help you grow your brand and leave your own unique mark. Episode 8, Finding Your Brand's Personality. So today, I just want to run through uh, a little bit of an introduction and then I'm going to dive into three really cool uh, yeah, tricks that you can use to find your brand's personality. And I'll inject that with some examples along the way. So first up, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I kind of, yeah, ventured into copywriting and how I kind of fell in love with copywriting for brands. Now, I was pretty lucky when I was at university. I had some very supportive lecturers, some fantastic, uh, fantastic students alongside me to kind of push me along. And it was in that third year that I found my love for printed products, branding, and yeah, creating, creating copy. Now, this one particular thing that I did called the rag trade collectible, which I've got with me, um, is, yeah, it's, uh, it kind of set in stone my, yeah, my adventure into branding. It focused on humanizing my voice and creating a structure around that, that I could then, uh, used to communicate and managed to get myself a uh, membership to the International Society of Typographic Designers, which was super cool as there was like 36 handed out that year in the world. Uh, and I managed to, I managed to bag one, which was awesome. So yeah, I, I guess the, the key topics that I want to look at, uh, defining your vo- tone of voice for your brand can be transformative for your confidence. So that's your confidence in, yeah, I guess across the website and how you're making, uh, how your marketing is and how your sales end up. And it can also transform your brand's awareness. If you really nail it, you can absolutely be, yeah, just, (laughs) just, transform your business um and you know it's a million ways you can kind of use your you know your brand's uh personality and tone of voice across your business whether it's in uh emails social media website phone calls i mean like yeah even in person meetings you can really start to amp things up and create an amazing consistency and what you do. So, okay, on to cool trick number one. I want you to look at uh, four to six brands that you love uh, that you're drawn to like a magnet and snoop over absolutely everything that they do. So, emails, socials, packaging, product descriptions, website, uh, anything, any way you can kind of see that they're doing brown branding. So if it's uh if they've got some downloads, they've got annual reports or whatever, the download anything you can get your hands on and look at how they humanize their brand. How did they engage you? Because that's what drew you to it. And if you love that sort of um the way if you love the way they've engaged you, there's gonna be other people that are in your same boat that also may be able to, yeah, jump on board and get interested. So, yeah, like back to that I just mentioned humanizing your brand's voice, and there's a really awesome example uh, of a Blue Mountains brewery called Mountain Culture. Their about page on their website 
looks at and says, how can we brew a beer even better than the last? Is the question we ask ourselves every day, sometimes at 3 a.m. too. Um, yeah, I love that. That's so cool. I think it works like the first question, how can we brew a beer even better than the last? That works in two ways. So if they brew a bad beer, they're obviously going to improve it on the next one. But if they brew a really good beer, then they're going to make it even better. Like it's um, super personalized. Obviously, it's attracted my attention. Um, but it it's, yeah, it's that kind of a little bit of self, a little bit of self-confidence, a little bit of showing the process of like, they're not going to stop and just say, oh, we brew beer. I mean, like, you know, how, how dull can that be? <laughs> but like I said, I mean, yeah, this is all really useful um, to find out how other people have done, you know, put together their personalities. Um, but it's really important to understand also how to apply it which is what we're going to do in cool trick number two. So you can combine the new knowledge of what works with your buyer personas that we spoke about in episode four or five. It was the ones about uh, customer, you know, finding your ideal customer. They were called the art of repelling your customers and the art of attracting your dream customers. So, yeah. and. Basically, we're going to start uh, adding some creative quirks to your copy mixed with your buyer personas, the knowledge of what works, and then, you know, kind of blending in what makes you awesome. But moving on to another brewery, as a, there's a theme here. Um, if another brewery called Heaps Normal, if they came in saying, buy our non-alcoholic beer, the chances are we wouldn't be even talking about it today. So for those of you that aren't aware, Heaps Normal are a non-alcoholic brewery who, yeah, are trying to shift the culture of drinking to a more mindful experience. You know, they've got some serious, well, if you look over their website, their copy has some serious swagger and confidence in it. It's super engaging. Um, so, yeah, whether this is just a little extract, whether you're meeting a few mates after work, catching a gig or having a barbie, the traditional alternatives to alcohol suck. The options at most pubs, bars and restaurants in Australia are sugary soft drinks, tea, coffee or water. Not not exactly an inspiring night out. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, exploring personality traits like um, assertiveness, you know, raucousness. Is that even a word? We're, we're going to make it a word because this is all about tone of voice. So we can just make new things up, right? Um, cautiousness and sheepishness. Sheepish sheepishness <laughs> you'll um yeah by by sort of yeah exploring the personality traits you're going to start uh painting a vibrant picture of how your brand talks um so just a few things you can look at uh how they walk you know are they dawdling fast-paced awkward uh how do they talk uh, do they talk with a really good rhythm? Do they talk in a slang sort of uh, way? Is it really formal? Is it really brash, intense? Um, how, do, how does your brand dress? Oh, that's going to be a funny one. So, yeah, I mean, like, are they be specific. Are they ready for a certain occasion? Are they, you know, are they getting... The, are they going out for a, a jog? Are they going out for a, a morning meeting? Are they going out to, uh, are they going out for a party? Are they going out for a night out, a wedding? Uh, you know, get in, get into it and have some fun. Uh, what else do they value? What do, you know, what does your brand value? What, 
you know, funny things that can come out there, little quirky bits. Uh, what do they, what does your brand talk about when they go out to those little social events and, you know, <laughs> what, you know, what do they think about? Um, what's their, you know, what's their drink order? What's their, you know, are they uh quadruple shot latte on soy milk and, you know, or are they an English tea? You know, the, all those sort of things, those, those extra details, it's not like they order coffee, they order tea, you know, uh, it, it's, do they, you know, what, like go deep into it, go deep into what cup of tea they have. Do they have it with 15 sugars? Do they have it with on the side of, uh, you know, uh, some food, uh, you, you know, be really specific to paint a really amazing picture and paint that vibrant picture that we want to do making it obviously lifelike and humanized and that's human this is humanizing this brand in its like greatest way um and it's getting creative don't just yeah just get into it and have fun that is you know essentially what we what we want to do and what, what people engage with um now my final 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 trick um number three cool trick number three i uh, know this one is yeah it's like looking at the dualities of people's personalities because we're all super complex we've all got loads of things going on sometimes we don't even see these things so yeah humans are complex they are not like yeast who have just a couple of jobs which is producing co2 or alcohol or and alcohol or or not um, depending on some of the different strains anyway that's enough about beer stuff um we've yeah so like we like i said we've got really complex intricate personalities and we also don't really like being labeled so we don't we don't try and do that that's not that's not fun um and we also contradict what we say and do. So it's really good to get balance in this. But to do this, I use a game and it's really, it's a really well-known branding game. Um, a branding game. That sounds fun, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, the branding game's called This Not That. Essentially, you're highlighting a dominant characteristic of your personality or the brand's personality, but finding balance in it. So these are things like we're confident, not cocky. We're experts, but not bossy. We're humble, but not weak. Concise, but not boring. So they are, yeah, like really good little things just to pick up on. Uh, they work really well to start giving some flavor to to the uh, to the topic of finding your brand's personality. Now we can we can go a lot deeper than we have, but I want to keep this short and concise and to give you some actually usable stuff that you can use. So in summary, the first thing you want to do is to analyze your brands you love, find their human qualities. And yeah, start, start, start looking at, looking at things a bit differently. The second step is combining all that new knowledge with your buyer customer personas. And then, yeah, dreaming up a brand personality they'd love to l interact with. Think about all those quirks. And then finally, it's kind of, yeah, balancing it out and making sure that you're not going too far with one of those personality traits that you've you're dreaming up last thing to yeah highlight is looking at yeah obviously you balanced out that character um and soon enough your brand's personality will start to take shape and storytelling won't be as awkward or confusing as what it was um, what you'll be left with is an authentic, natural, fun, and fruitful way of marketing your brand. That's it for today's episode. 
I am going to be back next week and we're going to be talking all about the brand's aesthetics. Then after that, we're going to start diving into speaking to some really cool guests. I cannot wait. Ta-ta for now.